In this video, I'm sitting here yet again with 50% of Altcoin Daily. How are you doing today, my man? What's up, Carl? Doing great. I'm excited about crypto. I'm excited that if the bottom hasn't come in the past six months, I think it's going to come in the next six months. And regardless of that, I think we are preparing to get into a bull market. And unlike some bull markets in the past, you know, every bull market, the space gets more quality. There's more quality mm -hmm. altcoin projects. So I am actually really excited about where crypto is going. Not today, not tomorrow, but if you can sit back, relax, and in the next one to three years, I think good things are going to happen. 100%. I, I always say that patience is so important in the markets because most people are impatient. So most people, they chase the quick money. But when you chase quick money, you tend to lose. And who do you lose to? You lose to the patient people that are sitting there just waiting for the gains to come to them. So I think that's very, very important to sit down and just believe what you buy. So whether that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or altcoins that we're going to go into in this video, um, believe in what you buy, do the research. And that's why I brought you on here, actually, because I want you to um, tell me and my audience, um, hopefully five altcoins that um, you are looking into that you can give an update on and um, and just um, yeah give us top five altcoins that might be a, a good um, thing to look into for 23. Let's do it Carl and as I'm going through this list I want to hear from your audience one if they like this pick or not and two, what other good projects are, are out there? Because like I said, I mean, I'm just going to go like five, six, four to six. Um, but there are plenty of other good ones. And, you know, if anybody knew the future, we'd all be rich. So not financial advice, but these are the altcoins, I think, that have a, they have a lot going on. Now, I could start with Ethereum, but anybody who subscribes to our channel, we talk about the, the value prop of Ethereum all the time. Hugely bullish on Ethereum, but will not be getting into it in this video. The first altcoin... That I want to briefly touch on is Algorand. Have you ever heard of Algorand, Carl? I've heard about it, but I'm going to be honest. I do not know much about Algorand. Let me give you the broad strokes. So Algorand is an alternative layer one. I think everybody knows there's the, the alternative L1s, the Cardanos, the polka dots, the e-golds, we're all familiar with that space. Now, Algorand doesn't get talked about a lot, but I think they do have a lot going on. So when I think of Algorand, I think of programmability, how easy it is to program. I think of interoperability in a space that's just getting more and more interoperable, You know, being able to talk to every everybody. I think you're going to need that. And then also Algorand, I think of core protocol properties. So actually on the base layer, what are the properties that would make it good or bad? Is it are more things permissionless and more towards decentralized because that would be good in my opinion or does it have properties that would stand the test of time. Now, the reason I wanted to mention Algorand today is because after all the FTX stuff, after all the Celsius stuff, even those even though those are centralized crypto companies, fact is that kind of stuff invites regulation into the space. Maybe this is something you're not totally concerned with in Dubai, but in America, it's certainly on the mind of many. So the reason I put Algorand on our list today, because I think if, for whatever reason, there is a stronger crackdown on the crypto market, I'm not saying there will be, but if there ever is, I think Algorand is one of the few that could really get off with a small slap on the wrist, if anything, and really have traction in the future. Because... The founder of Algorand is a guy named Silvio Michali. He is an MIT alum. And in fact, Algorand is an MIT award winner. And the only reason that's significant, obviously MIT, you know, really good college in America. The reason that's significant is because Gary Gensler has ties to MIT. Gary Gensler has actually mentioned Silvio, the founder, and Algorand specifically as a quality altcoin project. He in fact said, as a example, he said, you know, what Silvio is doing, you can put Uber on the blockchain. Those were words out of Gary Gensler's mouth. And if you really got into what was going on with FTX, you know that Sam Bankman Freed was meeting with Gary Gensler every single day. So Gary Gensler didn't see the scam that was going on with FTX. You know, I think Gary Gensler is the type of guy who likes to have friends, who likes to make connections, and, you know, Algorand's probably safe in that regard. So Algorand first coin I wanted to bring up today. Any thoughts? 
Um, no, I think it's great to to get some uh, some uh, alternatives. I mean, everyone talks about Ethereum, but I I think uh, it's interesting to uh, listen to the wide variety of um, other um, competitors out there. O obviously, I'm a big Ethereum bull. I have a bunch of Ethereum. That's my second biggest holding next to to Bitcoin. But uh, in the bull market, I'll be looking into uh, maybe taking some of my Ethereum and Bitcoin and deploying that into to um, other tokens so or and coins. And it, it's very interesting. So please keep going here. Exactly. Let's keep down this list of altcoins. That's what the audience wants to see. Like the video. We appreciate that. And again, I invite everybody to come on over to Altcoin Daily for a continued conversation. Coin number two, Carl. Sorry for the shameless plug. Coin number two is Avalanche. Now, Avalanche is an, another alternative L1, and I won't do an alternative L1 for the next coin, but Avalanche is an alternative L1. I think we do understand Avalanche a little, a little bit more than Algorand. We've heard it a little bit more. Certainly in 2021, that bull market, besides Ethereum, there was Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cardano. I think those were the big names in the L1 space. Uh, Avalanche still very much in the game, and they're really targeting scalability and fast confirmation times along with security, but it's really scalability and fast com confirmation times, which would make it desirable to build on Avalanche, to hold Avalanche, to have a good, good tokenomics, good supply and de demand dynamics in the Avalanche ecosystem. And the reason I wanted to bring Avalanche to the attention of your audience today is because one, I want to say they still have stuff going on. They're still very much in the game. And number two, they just recently launched a 300 million incentive program for enterprises, for gaming, for DeFi, for NFTs, all to get these different crypto companies to use their subnets, which is, you know, how they scale pretty much their subnets on Avalanche. It's basically subnets are application specific chains. And the fact that they're launching a 300 million uh, incentive program honestly means the coin's going to pump a little bit if the market conditions are right. So put Avalanche on your list. I like Avalanche. Next coin, Carl, is, and again, guys, if you're getting value in this video, smash that like button. I'll say it. If Carl never does, I'll say it. Next coin on our list is Ave. Heard of Ave, right, Carl? This one I've heard about. I know some basics about it, but I want you to make me an advanced expert. Okay, so Ave has actually been around since, if it wasn't 2017, it was definitely 2018. Now, Ave is DeFi on Ethereum. Ave is borrowing and lending, one of the original DeFi use cases. When I think of DeFi, Ave is one of the coins I think about. And Ave has been around since 2017. Now, a lot of people don't know that because it used to be called ETH Lend, I believe. And sometime in 2020, they rebranded. So Aave has certainly been around a long time. What's going on with Aave today? You can still borrow, you can still lend on Aave, but they just launched version three. This is very recent news, Carl. They just launched version three. You can still use version two. It is a decentralized permissionless protocol, but they just launched version three. Now, according to them, I wrote down what they say about it. They say the most exciting aspect of V3 is its flexible design, which enables a variety of new risk mitigation features risk mitigation features, improved capital efficiency, and decentralized liquidity, all while reducing gas costs. And that is essentially what it does. It makes things a little bit more decentralized, certainly easier to use, certainly more, um, a lot of valuable aspects why you'd want to use it. Now, like I said, this is an Ethereum DeFi, Aave still very much in the game, because what this version three does, what one of the many things it does is it helps Aave become more multi-chain, more interoperable, something always on the roadmap. But besides Ethereum, Aave is compatible with Polygon, with Arbitrum, Optimism, Phantom, Harmony, Avalanche. That's right now version three, and they're going to become more interoperable in the future with other chains. And that's why I like Aave. Now, DeFi in general hasn't really pumped hard since the very beginning of 2021. Anytime you bought Aave after 2021, it's been going down slash con consolidating. So it's certainly not you know pumping right now. I think Aave is one to look at. If you can get a good position, it certainly has a lot going on. It will be here that's coming bull market. And this is true for many, many altcoins and tokens uh, and, um, and coins out there. Like 
if you go to core market cap, you can see that almost every coin is down 90% since the all-time high. And some of them are down like 97, 98, 99. And actually I've found a few pretty decent projects out there that are on such insane discount right now that um, I agree with you. Like right now is a great time to, to start looking into these because I think we're at the end of the bear market or uh, start of the bull market. That's the best time because you're getting the cheapest price possible. Everyone who wanted to sold, sell already sold. So um, yeah, why don't you give us a little bit more? Yes, yeah, so let's fly through these. The next one is kind of a similar situation. It's been around a while. Chainlink. Now, everybody has heard of Chainlink who's been in crypto. Originally, the original product Chainlink had was providing reliable data feeds to smart contracts. And that's still what it does today. You know, I think of Chainlink as almost the AWS, the Amazon web service of the blockchain industry. Today, and I guess in a way, Chainlink always was, but certainly today, Chainlink is multi-chain. It's actually blockchain agnostic. Uh, today, they're compatible with Arbitrum, Avalanche, Binance, Phantom, Harmony, Polygon, Solana, Optimism, Metis, just to name some. And they have more than just that data feeds, reliable data feeds to smart contract product. They have more than just one product. They have data feeds, they have proof of reserves, VRF, which is verifiable random function. They have automation, CCIP. Now we're not going to get into specifics, but just go to their site. They explain it. They have many different products to offer and many different reasons why you would want to use Chainlink. In fact, Aave, according to you just mentioned, uses Chainlink to get reliable price feed data for their borrowing and lending service. Also, in the past six months, this happened, I think, you know, near the beginning of the bear market, didn't make huge news. SWIFT, which is a global financial transaction and messaging service that all the banks and financial services use across the world, is kind of outdated. Bitcoiners have been talking about overthrowing SWIFT forever. SWIFT did partner up and integrate with Chainlink, um, which is huge. Besides that, former Google CEO is a part of Chainlink. Um, as an advisor, also they have World Economic Forum ties. I'm not a fan of the World Economic Forum, but they're certainly a powerful organization. And the fact that they're talking about Chainlink right on their site, World Economic Forum, uh, certainly something to keep in mind as we are preparing for the next bull run. So I like Chainlink. In the spirit of a concise video, let's move on. I like Binance. Now, you know, Binance is kind of a wild card because the success Binance, the coin has had so much success since it started in 2018. And the and Binance is, you know, top three, one of the largest exchanges in the world, maybe the number one probably. And so the success of the token Binance, you know, largely depends on the success of the exchange and the organization as a whole. So there could be there could something could happen tomorrow, which could just, you know, totally tank. The value prop of Binance, but on the same page, you know, something could happen tomorrow. Binance gets world success, like a company like an Amazon, and you know, the Binance coin does really well. So I'm gonna put Binance on our list today. Now I know that you know CZ, Carl. What do you think about Binance? Yeah, I mean, exactly. CZ is actually based here in Dubai. Um, and um I would say the following, you know, Binance is massive, Binance is almost like a becoming a monopoly in crypto and i think that's uh, good for binance but is it good for the industry not so sure um and that's your friend dude i have to be neutral bro i have to be neutral he knows i i know i say like this um so it's it's not it's not news um and i'm not skeptical against binance i i don't think binance is bad honestly i i, I use binance on a daily basis you know uh, Binance, Bybit, and, um, you know, so I, I have no issues against Binance, uh, but there is a risk there. And I see the same risk with, with Binance, like I see with uh, with Tether, you know, there is this big, big, big central um, power that can be easily um, screwed over by governments, really. Like the biggest um, threat to Binance is, is actually the, the governments, not not something else. Um, you know, let's say Tether, for example, like if if the United States um, SEC or, or another government agency comes out and say that um, this was illegally done, Tether is, um, is um, you know, should be regulated and, and uh, all Tether has to be um, frozen, you know, 
what happens to the crypto industry then? Like that, that's going to be a huge blow for us. Uh, same with Binance. What if they come out to say that the BNB token is a um, security? That's already something that can change a lot of things. But what if they go even for, for, uh, further than that? But if you um, if you don't consider that, I would say that, yeah, Binance, like that's such a blue chip, you know? Um, I, I don't see Binance losing their grip of the market anytime soon. Like holding the Binance uh, coin is... I, I hold a bunch. You're totally right with your concerns. That is literally what I think of when I think of the concerns, because it does depend on the strength of Binance itself. I do just want to say some of the, you know, the FUD of Binance in the in the past couple months has been, what if Binance is insolvent like FTX? Now, is that possible? Yes, I have no inside knowledge of what's going on with Binance, certainly. But it's also possible because Binance did like a proof of reserves, but they didn't share everything. And people are kind of wondering, is there something they're hiding? I think it's possible that Binance might have more money than they want people to believe, that they've been so successful since 2017 that the reason they don't want to show everything is not because they don't have enough money to cover you know, what their assets. It's because they might have a lot of money that they don't want everybody to know about. Just speculation by me. Who knows? It's possible. And I, I would say that I think um, what happened in the past three months here, if anything, it strengthened Binance because all the FTX users, where are they going? I mean, probably Binance, right? And also everyone is talking about how how exchanges, you know, it's people are people just go to what they really trust and they trust Binance, you know. So so I think Binance got a lot of um deposits, a lot of um people going into to uh, to to that exchange but probably other exchanges as well actually the same we saw with Casta by the way in the past two three months we've never seen more um, um deposits and never more signups so I think maybe it's a, a phenom phenomena around the crypto industry but uh, the one exchange that for sure got the most must be binance so Honestly, I don't see them going anywhere soon. So if you hold Binance coins, I'm sure you're going to be completely fine. <laughs> the last coin, because I said I'd give you six. One more to get to six. The last coin that I want to say, drum roll please, is Matic a general ETH layer two solutions. And there's many options in that core category. I think this coming cycle could be, you know, every cycle kind of has some narrative. Last cycle, it was the L1s or even NFTs. I think it's possible this coming cycle could be the cycle of L2s because now we're seeing alternative layer ones like Cardano, like a Solana, not necessarily compete with ETH itself, but they're also having to compete with the ETH layer twos. So certainly Matic, it's like Polygon Matic. It's like half side chain, half layer two partnered with Facebook, Starbucks, Disney, Nike, Adidas, Adobe. So they have so much stuff coming on, brought in tons of users, tons of transactions, tons of everything, and they share it proudly on their Twitter. Also, they have big updates coming up with their original innovation was Plasma or something. I forget what they called it, but they're upgrading the Matic software in that they're going to have ZK and optimistic roll-up solutions. And a lot of people are looking forward to roll-ups in general in the cryptocurrency space. So also with the ETH L2 umbrella, besides Matic, we can put Optimism, Loop Ring, Mutable X, Arbitrum, all in there. And that's my list. Thank you, man. Aaron, always a pleasure to have you on the channel. And if anyone wants to know more about you and your bro and altcoins in general, I would suggest everyone should go and click uh, the link down below to your channel, Altcoin Daily. I would say maybe the biggest crypto YouTube channel right now. Is that true or? Biggest in many metrics for sure. Certainly biggest on consistent daily engagement. I don't know any other channel who's getting, oh, you know, 100,000 views on every video and we put out a video every day. And not to brag because we live and die by every video. And certainly some videos don't get that many views. Some videos get more, but uh, no, we're here to provide value. People are hungry for altcoin, for cryptocurrency information. And I'm a nerd about it. I love to share it. If you come on over from Carl's channel, write in the comments. I'm here from Carl's channel or something. And I'll heart the comment and I'll reply back, hopefully. But we'd love to see it happen. Carl, yeah, thank you so much great. for having me on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always a pleasure. Yeah, you have more views than me on the crypto channel. But actually on my vlog channel, I'm starting to catch up with you guys. <laughs> Carl, you're amazing. There are many ways, you know, I'm trying to to get where you're at. Certainly, you know, on 40 under 40, because I am past 30 now. <laughs> <laughs>
That's good. All right, bro. Always a pleasure. Guys, make sure to leave a comment down below also. When should they be back? And what should the topic be for the next video? Maybe not all, but maybe something else. I would love to know what topic we should have for the next collaboration. But guys, thank you so much. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.